Flounder Ceviche. Hey everybody, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Got my boy Nate Dog. What's up, brother? We were out today doing a little inshore fishing. Caught an inshore slam, one of the species being a flounder. That's and right. Nate's like, Joe Luke, have you guys ever done flounder ceviche? And I said, no, uh, why don't we do it on video? So we cleaned the flounder. We got four lovely fillets over here. And before we start getting into how you do this, because he loves doing ceviche, what do we need? Like, let's talk about all the ingredients here besides yeah. the obvious fish. I guess this is pretty traditional. Um, you know, I guess where I learned it was from Peru. Um, typically, it's a Peruvian dish, but you see it all over. Uh, so your basics, acid, that's what's going to cold cook the fish. Um, garlic and salt, that's going to tenderize it. And then you'll top it with a bed of cilantro, uh, red onion, and of course, a little heat to bring out the flavor there. Um, drizzle of olive oil on top, uh, softens it up a little bit, and it really goes for a nice option. So you're out there. For me, what inspires me, you're out there, it's hot all day, you get inside. I don't want to sit over a hot grill, so I whip up some cold ceviche and a cold beverage of your choice, and it just makes a great, refreshing snack. Sweet, let's I get like into it. it. What's, uh, what's step number one? All right, so step one, we already went ahead and filleted all this, so we'll, we'll pull it out here. You just want to make sure it's nice and cold. And basically, we're just looking for clean fillets. So um, it doesn't—it didn't really even need to be pretty. We just don't want any bones. Uh, we don't want any. I mean, you can put uh, those little chunks in there, but we don't want any junk kind of floating around. We want nice, clean meat. And then what you'll do is we'll just kind of work both sides of this, going back and forth, and just making nice slivers. Uh, this is going to go on chips. So we're just looking for something like that. And just go back and forth, um, hold the knife against your finger there, and there's no really magic to it. This one's pretty hard to mess up, just don't cut yourself. <laughs> this is how I like to do it. I'm sure there's uh, a ton of different ways. You can scope it over one more time um, and start stacking up your bowl there. Uh, note on the bowl, make sure you're using a non-reactive bowl. We're using acid uh, from the lime juice here that's going to cure the fish. So you want a glass or a metal bowl. Um, so it doesn't get funky. So I'll go through all these fillets and do this um, and get nice little portions here to go on chips. And then we'll, uh, we'll get the um, garlic and salt going for it and, and then the lime juice and then stack it with the toppings there. Sweet. So for now, you're gonna do this exact same process on all four fillets. That's right. Sweet. Yep. All right, so uh, as you can see, nice uh, clean little chunks there that'll fit nice on chips. Uh, you can use just regular old, uh, tortilla chips, plantains, anything like that. And uh, you, you can do a once through, uh, just make sure there's no kind of weird parts. It will get all cooked through with the acid. Um, now cook time, well, first we'll do the salt. We're gonna tenderize it, so salt and garlic. Um, so we'll get into this garlic here. So basically just mince your garlic here. You can use a kitchen tool or, or just a regular old knife. I usually just crack it like that, get the outside off. Um, and we're just gonna kind of work it down to little granular-ish pieces. Uh, for this amount, depending on how much you like garlic, I'd say two pieces would suffice. Um, what if, if wanna, I love garlic? If you love garlic, all of it, no. <laughs> if you love garlic, maybe double down, use four pieces um, for this amount. Two would be just fine. You really want to use fresh garlic. It really makes a difference. Trust me, I, I used canned garlic in this for a while and it really just gives it that extra little zest um, that you're looking for, that little zing. So, I mean, I'm no professional chef, but just mince your garlic down, get it nice and minced down, something like that. Keep working it down. I'm sure somebody has a nice helpful tool of the best way to mince garlic. But when you're out on the dock, just trying to get a cold snack, just mince it down. Keep working it down. You want it pretty fine. That looks good. Garlic action there. Load all that up in the fish. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to salt. Depending on how salty you want it, I don't know, maybe for this much, maybe two teaspoons or half a tablespoon. I'll give it like a 
Well, we are salt strong, so we have to get a lot of salt. <laughs> so we just got some kosher salt. Oop, that's, that's, that's plenty right there. And uh, basically this step is just tenderizing the fish. Um, and you it's mix gonna, it around or just keep yep, going? Yep, okay. so get in there and mix it around, get it melded together, move it around a good time. And what you'll see is moisture will start coming out of the fish. It'll start getting it nice and tenderized and soft. We'll let that sit maybe five minutes and we'll start working on the limes. As for limes, um, this might need maybe six. Um, you can't put too much lime juice. You basically just want to have a level that needs to be completely covered by lime juice. I think it's just a rule of thumb. Um, so it's enough to cook it. So we'll work through all these limes. It really helps to have a lime squeezer, citrus squeezer. If you don't, um, a fork, half it with a fork. Um, works just fine so you get a fork and uh, you can even use a knife it's a little more dangerous but you just work through and squeeze these guys uh, one by one and just keep going fresh lime juice until you get it all covered up there yeah so basically um, I love ceviche it's one of my favorite fruits, foods it's just an essential, refreshing way to eat fish. You know, it's basics. We got a couple ingredients. You can do it just about anywhere. You don't need a fancy kitchen, kitchen fancy knife, or any of that. So uh, where I learned it, how to do it traditionally, was in Peru, uh, backpacking through Machu Picchu and stayed in a little valley. And we did a cooking course. I uh, just came across a, a cooking course there and um, had a, one of the chefs, and he took us to the local market. and. Got a couple fish and flayed them up and did this. So it's, it's pretty exciting. It's about how I thought it would be, um, but walking through it with a professional chef and everything, um, you know, you get the, you get to sign it off. It's pretty good. So right. this was about a 17 inch flounder. Have you found there's certain sizes, species that yeah. are better than others? So it's weird. Um, I, when it comes to seafood, I tell everybody you should just try stuff, try it for yourself. Don't say, you know, something's not good just because you heard it. So for me, uh, I tried it with flounder. I used to do it with offshore fish. I was like, I'll try inshore fish and tried it with flounder. It's phenomenal. I've done it with redfish, um, bluefish, trout, all sorts of fish. And it's actually, it tastes great just about any fish you could try. No catfish. Don't ever, <laughs> don't ever ceviche a catfish. No, but it's, it's great. So, I mean, I would try it on anything as long as you're bleeding your fish, they're staying ice cold and you're doing it fresh. Um, it's really hard to go wrong. It's a nice option, a cool, a refreshing option, a way to do fish. Cool. So with this now, we filled it up basically to the top. Yep. And you get your fork and you can kind of go and just make sure everything's nice and pressed down there. Nice and good. So for about five minutes, is that the... Uh, so here? five minutes just on the on the salt and the garlic, the okay, tenderizing got it. part. And this part is as early as 20 minutes. Um, and then if you have a denser, heartier fish, um, you're upwards of, of, of an hour. So I think just kind of the rule of thumb, what's going to happen is it's not going to be translucent. It's going to get white and, and firm. And when you start to see it turn like that, that's when it's about ready. Um, some people will say 20 minutes. Some people like a little, a little firmer, a little more done, maybe 30, 40 minutes. But um, usually the thin, that flounder cooks pretty quick. Um, so we'll check it in probably 20 to 30 minutes. Sweet. And leave it out? In the, uh, in the fridge. fridge. Okay. Yeah, put cool. it in the fridge. Um, and then we'll, we'll actually, before we put it in there, we'll put the bed, our little bed of uh, the veg here on top to dress it up. Cool, let's cool. do that then. Yep, so we don't mix this in yet, um, but we'll set it nice and neat on top. Grab a little handful here, that should be good. Some people don't prefer stems. It doesn't really bother me. There's a little more flavor in the stems. If you don't like the crunch, you can take the stems out and just use the leaves. So we'll go with this. First up is the cilantro here. So nothing fancy, do a loose chop on it. Put that on there. Nice little bed. Cilantro this is where your freshness is going to come in. That combined with the salt and lemon juice. Um, if you like a little more cilantro, you're welcome to put it in there. Next up is a little red onion. Um, you can use shallots. Um, we won't need much of this. And so what does the red onion do? Red's going to give it a little bit of that crunch. 
So a little texture change. You got the soft fish. Um, you got the nice freshness. And this, this uh, red onion is going to give us the, uh, the crunch factor on there. And a little, a little zest, too. So just put it right there on top. Yep. And then we finish with a little pepper. Got to have a little heat. I think it's just a red chili of sorts. Got like that. You can get a little more. You want to drizzle a little bit of salt and pepper on the edge. Man. We'll let that sit. All right, so here's our final product uh, before the fish is finally cooked. So we're all set, everything's cut up and ready to sit in the fridge. We'll put it in there and we'll come back out with the final product. Sweet. All right, been 30 minutes. Yeah, 30-ish minutes, we're gonna pull it out. Check her out. Give it a check. Should be nice, white and firm. We'll be oh, ready to go. baby boy, yeah, look, at that. look at that. All right. So um, olive oil is yeah, the like last the, ingredient. A little drizzle, a little, little love around the edge here and uh, be good to go. I'm gonna teach you that in Peru, huh? That's right, yeah. So we'll bust open the chips here. I'll be the first one up and uh, see if I don't die. So do you mix it up at all or you just? Yeah, so I'll usually, I mean, you can use a spoon, a spoon too, but I'll get in there and kind of chip it up, chip it up. Mm -hmm. Get it nice and mixed together. I'm gonna come behind just like I do in fishing when someone misses a fish. They miss a nice piece of flounder, I'm gonna scoop it. Man! Right, mm. a hot summer day or a long day after fishing? Ooh, that's good stuff, brother. Hey man, save me some, bro. <laughs> you are inhaling that stuff. Mm. Woo, baby! That is good. A little, little kick to it as well. Mm, a little pepper coming in. Man, I think a couple of modellos and uh, we might be... That's it. Woo, Luke. Let's take it. You keep filming, we'll, uh, we'll keep eating here, dude. This is awesome. Well, any other, any other final tips on uh, sabiching anything, any kind of... Yeah, so the fish oh, we used here was about there. 17 inches or so. Pretty ah. good size flounder. Um, you can really use a lot of different fish. Um, you just want to nice, make sure they're nice and clean and flayed up in pieces like that. Um, a nice thing, if you're, if you're filleting a lot of fish, and you're doing those fast cuts through, a lot of times you can get tight to the bone or uh, off areas like cheek meat and stuff. That is a lot of extra meat that, you know, you probably would have thrown away either. That would make great ceviche. So you get your prime cuts, you stack all that up and come back and clean through it uh, with some detail with a good knife and you can get a good stack of ceviche and you put that together and now you got something, a cold appetizer to go with some hot, uh, follow up with some hot fish later. So. Mm, that's good. Well done, brother. All right. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. For more cooking tips, how to catch fish, not contests, anything you can imagine, from start to finish, from going out in the water here at the table, go to saltstrong.com. And of course, if you haven't already, join us in the Insider Club. We got all kinds of cool stuff waiting on you. Pow! There's something about the water that'll give you peace all by yourself or with your family. Live salt strong and wet alive.